Welcome back to the Lowdown on Physics. Uh, this is screencast number one in a series on electric power in uh, Unit 4 Physics number one. Today we'll be looking at magnetism, just put it into a bit of context. Uh, magnetism is something that has been known since sort of ancient times, like 600 BC. Uh, they realised that stone could attract pieces of iron, this particular type of, of stone. And uh, basically it was named Magnet after the area that it was found in, which was called Magnesia, uh, now, now Turkey. Uh, what they noticed was that iron, a piece of iron were attracted to the stone and they could then also attract other pieces. So the magnet actually magnetised the iron that it was in contact with. And this is a process called induction that we're going to look at uh, throughout this topic in various different uh, situations. So really electricity and magnetism are effectively different aspects of the same thing and so this study will be about analysing that relationship between them. So let's just start with a quick review of what we uh, know about magnets. Magnets are made of like a ferromagnetic material that's like, like iron that has crystals that can be aligned. Now they always have two poles, there's always a north pole and a south pole, you can't separate these things and, um, and they are surrounded by a magnetic field. Now magnetic fields, um, all magnets have that field around them as I just mentioned. The direction is defined as the direction that the north pole of a compass would point if it was placed in there. So the direction that you put the arrow on a line is where the north pole would face, which would be attracted to a south pole. So the field lines then, as a consequence, would start at the North Pole, and then if the North, you put a magnet in here, it's going to point towards the South Pole. So the field lines go in that direction. As a result, they always end at the South and start at the North. They're going out of the North into the South. Need to remember that one. There, when you do a field line drawing, they're always the field line field is always strongest where the lines are drawn close together, which is generally going to be happening uh, close to the pole. As you get further from the pole, the lines begin to spread out, and the field strength um, will will get weaker and weaker as you go. Now, important thing: field lines never cross. Okay, you can't have a contradiction of field. You can't have it going left and and up at the same time. You now, they are vectors, and we'll get to that in a second. But you can't have a two field lines crossing so that it will cause it to go in opposite directions. Alright, so just a couple of examples, you know, different magnets depending on how they are magnetised and what their respective field lines would look around that magnet. Uniform in here, uniform here, um, but not uniform on either of these two magnets. Okay, I said just a moment ago that uh, magnetic field strength is a vector. Now, basically, like all vector quantities, we can sum it at any given point. So if we've got north field and a north field, rather than having those field lines cross, what's going to happen is the resultant field at this point would be the sum. Um, the up from the vertical magnet and the across from the horizontal magnet would give us a resultant vector field that is pointing out there. If those two magnets are equal distance and equal strength, then that line's going to be at 45 degrees. This will be what our first prac is based around. Now magnets are dipolar. What do we mean by that? Basically it's that we can't break the poles apart. So even if you continue to break it and break it and break it into pieces, every time you break it, you're going to get a north and a south, a north-south, 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 north-south for every uh, breakage that you do. So you can't actually separate the poles. Yeah, no doubt you should remember the law of attraction for magnets, and that is like poles will repel, unlike poles will attract. So you can see here where there's no field, it's what we would call a null point, uh, so we've got like poles here. Over here you can see the field lines are indicating that there's an attraction between these two magnets, so those would clearly be opposite poles. What happens when we get a current carried through a wire? Basically, any time that there's a charge moving, it will create a magnetic field. Okay, and this happens for all charges when they're moving. 
So if we have a wire, that means that we're forcing electrons. If we push a current through it, then we have, we're forcing these electrons to move all in this uniform field. Then basically we create this magnetic field around the charge that's flowing. And then of course, if you increase the current, give it a stronger current, then you're going to give it a stronger field. More current, more field, stronger field. So example here, we've got a current carrying wire and you can see that these iron filings are going in those loop shapes that we saw earlier. We'll attempt to replicate something similar to this in one of our practices as well. So how do I know the direction that the magnetic field is flowing? So we have what we call the right hand group rule. And this is just an aid for your memory. And what this says is your thumb, if you point your direction, your thumb in the direction of conventional current, always in conventional current, as your fingers wrap around the field, uh, wrap around the wire, they point in the direction of the field at that point. Okay, so thumb in the direction of conventional current, fingers then point in the direction of the field. You're guaranteed to get a question about finding direction of current or, um, or field based on some diagrams in your exam. And I love it because I always make it awkward so that you've got to turn your hand into this real weird position to try and make it work. And yeah, it's just, you know, uh, well, it probably sounds pretty lame, but it's pretty funny to watch every student get to a particular question and, and pull these stupid arm moves trying to work it out. Anyway, that's for me to laugh at and you to do. So how do we represent this on the page? Easy enough if we have it going perpendicular to the page. What happens if, so parallel to the page or across the page, what happens if it's going in or out of the page? Basically, if you're drawing magnetic field that's going into the page, you put a cross. Okay, this is, this is a convention for magnetic field going into the page. If it's coming out of the page, you just put a dot. Easiest way that I've found to remember this is to think of it like an arrow. So if you have an arrow, what you can see is the feathers or the fins as they're disappearing into the page. However, if it's coming out, what you can see is the point as it's coming towards you to hit you. So crosses in, that's the feathers of the arrow as it flies away and dot, that's the point of the arrow as it's coming out to, you know, kill you to a bloody end. It'll be very tragic, so just make sure you duck. All right, moving on, something a bit more serious. So what about if we want to represent a wire? Okay, so here we've got the wire, conventional current is going to the right, so if we use our right-hand grip rule, thumb points that way, fingers go into the page, or if we wrap around further, fingers start to come out of the page down the bottom, and that's the way that we would represent that field. Why, do, why are the crosses here closer than those crosses there? Why aren't they all the same distance apart? If we think about it, closest to the wire, that's where the field's gonna be stronger, and it's gonna get uh, weaker as we go further away, and so therefore we've got those wire, uh, those dots and those crosses spread out further as you get further from the uh, the actual wire itself. What about if in this, you know, in the random situation that we have just a charge rather than all this current flowing through the the field uh, through the through the conductor? Sorry, we have basically two options. We've either got an electron moving or we've got a proton moving. Now both of them moving in the same direction. The electron and the proton are going to have fields in opposite directions. Now the reason is because they're opposite charge, they're going to induce a field in the opposite direction. Now based on conventional current, that is the flow of positive charge if we recall that from unit 3, that means thumb would point in that direction and therefore fingers would curl around. Okay, do that on the screen as you're watching this. Make sure you practice that right hand grip rule. Now, conversely, because we've got a negative charge here, effectively that's the same as positive charge flowing to the right. So if your thumb is to the right, 
that means that the field or your fingers point in that direction okay the faster it moves again the stronger that field that it's going to produce all right what about if we loop a single coil of wire so we've got a big wire and we put it in a loop what's going to happen to the magnetic field what would it look like okay all on the inside it's going to appear to be going in and on the outside it's going to be coming out why is that well if we do the right hand grip rule on this side as conventional current flows there we've got it going into the page on the right of the wire out of the page on the left of the wire if you go round and follow that round okay at this point your thumb is pointing down your fingers are going into the page on the left out of the page on the right and anywhere you do that on the wire that's the effect you're going to get so here we kind of got sort of this uniform all the all the field going into the page and on the outside we've got all the field going out of the page so what about instead of using a single coil we use hundreds and hundreds of coils okay this is what we call a solenoid basically it is coils and coils and coils of wire now what's going to happen is as that current flows through the coil after coil after coil after coil we produce all of this magnetic field going through and so we're kind of now starting to get something that's going to look a bit more like a standard magnet so the field that we produce here we could almost draw a bar magnet on which side would be north Okay, it's got to be this side because the field starts at the north, goes into the south. Okay, right hand grip rule. Okay, we have one for the solenoid as well. In this scenario, we actually start with the direction of the current and then locate the north field. Or if you knew which one was north, then you can work out the direction of the field, uh, direction of the current in the coil. Basically, to locate the North Pole, wrap your fingers in the direction that the current is going. So here the current is going up on the side closest to us, down on the side furthest from us. So the fingers wrap around and therefore that thumb would point to the north direction. So the field lines would be going out here, wrapping around and heading in here. Okay, that's it on magnetism for the moment. So I'll see you in class and we'll hit it up with a prac.